<laughs> Everybody just seemed to enjoy the games. We only had a couple of swimming pools around, one in Auburn, one in Lincoln, and baseball was a big thing to them in those years. There's no, there wasn't any grass, you know, the ones that I played in to begin with. Yeah, they were all dirt. Dirt infield. Oh, and they hit yeah. that ball, hit the field, and whoop 10 feet in the air sometimes. Yeah. But Lincoln, Lincoln had a, uh, an yes. outfield grass. Yeah, yeah Roosevelt did too. Yeah. But the Lincoln High School, they played at the high school before they put McBing Park, and the left handers kind of got the business because every, the, the, the right field line was was only about 260 or something right at the right at the yeah, corner, wasn't there, or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was. But that was a ground rule double from a pole they had out there yeah, to the right, wasn't it? Everything right of the pole was just a double. <laughs> yeah. And then Kofi's kind of got the business too, because the left handers were kind of there. But talk about that. We had this, the ballpark in Kofax, and then Harvey West from Placerville. They took a big hill we had in town there, and Harvey West donated all the equipment to come over and made us a ballpark in Colfax. We furnished the drivers and the fuel, but he furnished the caterpillars and the great alls and, the, and that was awful. That's the kind of support we had in the whole communities in, in them days. It, the old Harvey West did that. Well, I remember Colfax, you had to watch out for rattlesnakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and had a ditch in right field. Yeah. 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 Center field, there was no fence or anything, and boy, you went out through the Poison oak, I'll never forget that. And, and I was a little leery because they said, talk about rattlesnakes. And I wasn't that old at the time and, and it made you think. I can remember too in uh, in Lincoln where they had the old ballpark, it was all skinned over by McBean Park. And uh, Park Schuler, I remember one time was playing out there. And this was, this was back in the 30s. I remember 38, 39, I can remember that. And uh, if a guy hit a, a ball to left field and got by him well, it rolled down towards the creek, Auburn Ravine down there. And by the time he retrieved it, you know, well, the guy could have gone around the bases two or three times. Well, Park used to take a ball out there and hide it. <laughs> and if the ball went over there and you couldn't see it, he'd go over and pick it up right away and throw it and hold a guy to a single or a double or something. Well, another thing we haven't mentioned, a good money maker, I can remember in Auburn from left field to right field, the fence had signs on them, and I can remember when they were negotiating one time, $50 a sign, and that was a big money maker to help the ball club get their uniforms. We had to play a program, yeah. Yeah, program. sell the no, merch, program. a little advertisement on the program, and then they have uh, where you can keep the score on, box score on them, too. It's a ways and means of raising money. I like to go back to about 1930 about 15 years old and I used to go down to Royer Park when they used to play down to Royer Park. Uh, I think back to them old timers like Fred Garbolino and them old timers that played down there and and there was good baseball down there at that old bar pop then and uh, people used to gather there every Sunday. They had nothing else to do. They didn't have cars to run around and, and uh, they enjoyed the ball games down there. Well, we hitters. had we had some great hitters. Yeah, I can remember a story. Time I think I was only about 16 years old, and right after the war, and uh, Roseville had a player by the name of Pete Moon, oh, yeah. left-handed hitter, and uh, just a wonderful guy and a, and a good hitter, really a good left-handed hitter. And I think he probably had just had gotten home from the service center or something, and and uh, Charlie Perry was managing uh, Lincoln at that time, and somehow he got Pete to come up and sign and play. And they were everybody's really happy. Well, Pete had kind of a bad day one day there. Didn't hit anything or anything, and everybody was giving Charlie hell for signing him up. He came back the next week and hit three of them over the right field fence. <laughs> Can you tell us anything about Fulton and the one-armed outfield? Oh, Charlie Spider Zoops. Oh, Charlie Gallagher. Charlie Gallagher. Charlie Gallagher. Charlie Gallagher. Charlie Gallagher. Charlie Gallagher. One oh, arm Charlie. Yeah. One arm. He kept the ball oh. and put that glove under that. Stump he had, stumpy had and yeah, he, he played left field, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. played outfield. He played center yeah. out when I first oh, did he? watched him. Yeah, I remember him playing. I was uh, impressed with uh, pitching in this league, like Jack Carpenter and Fred Bazana and Leroy Stevens, all good pitchers. And, and uh, I was really impressed with these uh, pitchers. Jack was a great pitcher. 
Yeah. yeah, he was on Rear and Hell too. Yeah. Really. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. Of course, uh, you know, <laughs> he threw hard and he threw wide. Yeah. <laughs> high and wide. Wasn't scared to knock you down. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You said that right. <laughs> you said that right. Knock me down two yeah, times. In the row. Lights were I still yeah, have stitches on my back from when he hit me. Then that fumes from the red hot he put on his arm too was pretty good. <laughs> that limbered that up, Jack. Yeah, did sure help. <laughs> One thing I could mention is we've talked quite a bit, but we've never talked about strikeouts. I can't remember for sure whether it was in the late 40s or early 50s, but I wound up with 21 strikeouts to set a record, which was the most ever gotten since the Placid Riggs Nevada League started. And then eight years later, our friend here from Roseville can't think of his name. He wound up with 24, so I never had any more strikeout <laughs> records. <laughs> well, you, Freddie, you ended up with a bunch too, didn't you? Freddie ended, ended up with a no hitter. Yeah. Oh, was that what it was? Yeah. Oh, no yeah, hitter. No hitter. I have a no hitter against Colfax. <laughs> That's before I start playing. Yeah, Danny doesn't remember 46, that. Right. 46, yeah. 46, oh, right. Against the Rosal Merchant. I was a baby. Yeah. Against the Rosal Merchant, right. I can remember one game we played in Truckee. There was a guy that caught for Truckee by the name of Joe Corridge. I hit, a, hit this catcher. I had two strikes on him, and I said, I'll just blow it by him. So I Reared back and threw it as hard as I could, and it kind of sailed in and hit him right in the donkey, right in the head. <laughs> Knocked him out colder than a wedge. Yeah, I would imagine. And <laughs> yeah. uh, we had to wait about five or ten minutes, but here, here came the meat wagon. They <laughs> drove right down the home plate, and they rolled old courage in the meat wagon. This was in about the second inning. And about the seventh inning, here come the meat wagon back, and drove right down the home plate. Old Joe Corich wa walked out of the meat wagon, and Milo Martinovic was the manager. He allowed him to go back in the game. And old Corich cost the rest of the game. I swear to Christ, that, that guy had the hardest head I ever hit. <laughs> Brad, who'd you face that was a good hitter? You know, they're all good hitters they're to all, me. <laughs> yeah. I think Pete Moon was. Yeah, I thought Pete, Pete was Moon one to of the me was one of the best. Yeah. Uh, I've had. Good well, the good part about Should that, I... them talking about all these good ball players, my career, I got to play with Pete Moon, was a manager for Roseville. Ames Foyer was Nevada City. Jake Goldsberry managed for Grass Valley. And then uh, Billy Williams for Lincoln. So all them good guys that. After their career was over in that, they, they had enough interest to, to come back and to, to be the coaches for the, for the players. JHL, we had a team uh, we came back from camp. Most of the people came back from camp and uh, they started a team and they played uh, a lot of Japanese teams all in the valley. Then later, we joined the Placer Nevada League. Was that about 1954 or five? Uh, 1950. 50. Oh, 50? 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 51, I believe. Mean. Oh. And uh, most of our players were working on the farm. Yeah. So, you know, around here, the farmers worked about 10, 12 hours a day, about seven days a week. So we didn't get to practice too much. And, uh, so it really showed on the Ball field. <laughs> no, like I, to practice, you know. <laughs> they did very well. Really. Well, you were in the league for about five years, weren't you? We were in the league for about five years. We shared the, the Arbor field, the Cubs and the and JCL, and well, we had a lot of fun, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes I thought we were crazy because work work on the ranch and, yeah. <laughs> and then go out at night or Sunday afternoon and play ball, lose a lot of weight, you know. <laughs> Couldn't lift the bat later, around July. You know. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. A number of them, after they dropped out of the league, though, uh, came in with other teams. Bob was quite a catcher, so he was in great demand. 
<laughs> yeah, Bob, Bob was a catcher on our championship team at uh, Placer Junior College in 1949. Yeah. Okay. Well, these two were really good pitchers.